Iveen and Dr. Dre are an unlikely but powerful duo in the music industry. Their 25-year partnership started when Iveen's Interscope Records acquired the rights to market and distribute Dr. Dre's work with Death Row Records. In addition to their musical success, this pair created the popular headphones brand Beats by Dre. I bet you got some in your house right now. They later sold it to Apple for $3 billion with a B. A new docu-series called The Defiant Ones looks at the history of both music greats and their stories are told through interviews with artists and music executives that they've worked with over the past few decades. The four-part series is directed by the one and only Alan Hughes of the Hughes Brothers, the duos behind iconic movies like Menace to Society, Dead Presidents, and The Book of Eli. Here's a look at The Defiant Ones. Check, check, check. We're talking about Jimmy and Dr. Dre. Jimmy Iovine is the levitator. Dre is the innovator. I need something a little bit more impressive. Bruce taught me a work ethic. I had to work harder than the next guy just to do as well as the next guy. And to do better than the next guy, I had to kill. I knew that I had to be a success at something. A friend of mine put together two turntables. I started doing this thing. <laughs> Jimmy Iovine and Alan Hughes join us now at the table. I started doing this thing. It's almost like started from the bottom, now we're here. That's what we can say about you, Jimmy. Started from the bottom, now we're here. I love, Alan, how you started this four-part documentary series on HBO because you start with a crisis between the two of them. The huge Beats deal, Apple deal, had just been announced. And then there was a big leak about it, and Apple was not happy, and it looked like the deal was in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. And that's how you start the documentary. Yes. Which shows what, in your opinion? It shows the strength of their partnership. Because it was terrifying when that went down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I almost, the film almost went away too. I thought my film was gone. Because what? Because I was shooting for three weeks before that happened. Yeah. And, before, and he, he kept it a secret. Dre kept. I didn't know where they were making apps. You hadn't told anybody, Anyone. Jimmy. Mm -hmm. And then it's leaked on the internet. Yeah, it was leaked in uh, one of the newspapers. On Facebook, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you thought, okay, this deal's going bye bye. Well, I just knew that it was a problem, uh, and I knew we had a real problem. And uh, Apple's very concerned about secrecy, you know, as they should be. And um, it was a very difficult time. It was one of the most difficult times between me and Dre. And, I, and Alan decided to open the movie with that, I guess, to show that, you know, you stand, you know, like. What I said in the in, in, what I said to Will I Am, which he says in the movie, is Dre made a mistake. It was the horse I rode in with, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah. and I'm sticking know. with him. Oh, yeah, and, plus, I'm, I'm, I'm and, and, and also that's who brought you. Tell you second. Yeah, yeah. We we immediately I wanted to immediately send a signal to the audience that this is not a fluff piece. This is not going to be a fluff fluff piece. This is not going to be a tribute film. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a serious film. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And the ugly. And, and did, did you get them to tell the truth? Absolutely, and I learned about I learned a lot about what the truth is. There's versions of the truth yeah. between the two of them. But I think you should set the let the audience know about the the partnership that you and Dre have because you come from two very different backgrounds. Yes, very different, very different, but similar in some ways. You know, uh, uh, Dre's from Compton. I'm from uh, Brooklyn, and uh, we both. Wanted to make a better life for ourselves, right? And we both somehow we were both recording engineers. That's how we got our break. You know, he was a DJ, but he became a recording engineer, and so did I. And uh, what happened was is that when we finally met, and we meet in episode three, and um, and we stuck together, and for in some of the most difficult and unnerving times in the ever in the history of the entertainment business. Yeah, and. And whoever sees the movie looks to me and says, how did you do that? And, you know, a friend of ours have asked me, um, how did you do that? And I said, uh, because I believe in him and he, he stayed with me, he trusted me, you see. That was a big thing. The thing was that he trusted me and there was no basis for him to trust me. There's so many great interviews yes. in, the, in the documentary, Bono, of course. And he says there's a lot of people that don't like him but that's why you want him in the room, for his brutal honesty. Mm -hmm. So what were you brutally honest with Bono about? Well, it's, well, it's usually the music. You know, like, he'll come to me and say, it's the, it's the greatest song I ever wrote. And I say, well, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and we've had that relationship. And I'm very honest with him about it. And, you know, uh, it, it, that's the hardest thing to be honest about. That's the thing he loves and cherishes the most outside of his family. No, Bono says you're like a virus that take over the main organs of the body. Go ahead, Charlie. <laughs> well, yeah. 
But here, <laughs> what we're talking about is what, and you've said this, but we've talked about this before with you. Apple didn't buy a bunch of headphones. They bought a bunch of heads. That's what well, they bought. Well, I mean, the good news is that the headphone business has done really well at Apple. So I'm thrilled for that. But the main, th not the main thing, but the, the, the focus of it right now is the, the streaming service. Apple Music, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I wanted to get Apple into streaming and I wanted them to come into the business to help the business because there's, they are the only company that can truly blend technology and liberal arts. They were founded on that premise and I wanted to do streaming there. And um, so we needed everything to be in one place. We needed Beats to be in the, I couldn't be over here running Beats and over here running Apple Music. It wouldn't have worked. So we have it all there now, and uh, it's going really well on all fronts. It's going really, yeah. do you, when you travel the world. But it's the music that matters. Well, it's right now, it's the future, you know, yeah. you know. But when you travel, do you notice how many people are wearing Beats headphones? You know, you I look? still, I still, when I see people wearing Beats on the street, which is everywhere I go and every country I go, I always assume that I gave it to them. <laughs> because in the beginning, I would just give them to everybody, yeah. you know? And so whenever I see them on the street, I say, I wonder how I know that person. And you, start, you said it started not when they came to Dre about sneaker deal, and you said, don't do sneakers. The speakers. And the reason speakers. why I said yeah, that you know. is because fashion and audio don't rhyme. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Iovine, your dad once said this about you. Every room you go into is better because you're there. And everybody Aww. that knows and loves you feels that. And, and if you want to understand that, go look at this documentary. Yes, this documentary is knockout. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you so much. Very well done. Very well done. Jimmy Iovine and Alan Hughes. It's called The Defiant Ones. It airs on HBO over four nights starting July 9th. That's next week.